We're climbing in elevation through the central plateau of Haiti, amid the terrain which gave this country its name. Haiti means high mountains in the language of the Taino, the indigenous people who lived here before Christopher Columbus arrived. Since Columbus, Haiti's had a rough 500 years, slavery, poverty, and recently, a catastrophic earthquake. But it also has almost 10 million people who are proven survivors. Haitians are rich in spirit. It's more about community. That's where our spirit comes from. Episcopal priest Father Joseph Constant grew up in Haiti's central plateau in Mer Belay. We met in the community of Conge, where the Episcopal Diocese of Haiti held its second annual meeting since the earthquake, bringing together, among others, the four dozen Episcopal priests of the diocese, including Canon Oje Beauvoir. I do believe people are in good spirit, but the challenge is people lack almost everything. The Diocese of Haiti is the largest Episcopal diocese in North and South America. However, it's still relatively small within Haiti itself. And while the Episcopal Church suffered like all Haitians from the catastrophe of the earthquake, a walk around Kanj amidst all those church members seems to demonstrate the power of spirit over trauma. We can say that we're still in the wilderness because uh, you know that we still have our difficulties, but now we are better. Kanj is also a living, I might add shining example, of the big impact of a relatively smaller church. Willie Pognon, who runs the IT department here, showed me around as we visited an emergency room and then a pediatric ward and later a pharmaceutical warehouse. The Kanj Medical and Education Complex includes six separate clinics and employs almost 4,000 people, including physicians and nurses who are mostly Haitian. So the church has been very involved in all aspects of the life of Haitian people. The Episcopal Church community in Kanj began when a hydroelectric project, finished in 1956, flooded not only the Artibonite River Valley, but also the homes of thousands of poor rural Haitians. Father Fritz Lafontaine, now in his 80s, recruited those homeless for a mission parish and later a clinic, and now Kanj is a model imitated across the world. Well, the first church to help people understand that your faith and your culture can also go together. The very Reverend Canon Oje Beauvoir is a good man to travel with if you want to learn about Haiti and especially about the Episcopal Church. My father has been a warden of a small mission church and one priest went to the parish and said to him, stop using the money to buy lands and uh, livestock. Send the children to school. That's undoubtedly the reason that Canon Beauvoir is perhaps the biggest booster of Haiti's 250 Episcopal schools. St. Paul's School is on the main road in Monwi, north and west of the capital and practically on the coast of the Caribbean. St. Paul's educates more than 300 children. The youngest are three, the oldest 15, in four languages, Creole, French, English, and Spanish. That school has been in the center of the life of the church. And for years, most of the leaders of the community have been to that school. The students here must pass exams to advance after sixth and ninth grade, and more than 90% do. Children here also receive lunch every day, something their families often cannot provide. Before eating, they get careful instruction on hand washing a matter of life and death since Haiti's deadly cholera outbreak. This is a part of the education to, to teach a, a, a student to wash their hands before uh, they eat. Always wash their hands, you know, because if not, they can die. It's difficult to imagine a place that would make Monwi seem urban, but we found one. Up a winding, rocky road past donkeys and mopeds, overlooking a river where women wash clothes and dry them on the rocks, is the tiny village of Bois Blanc. 
St. Mark's School, educating 90 students, sits under a breadfruit tree as women from the community fix lunches and my colleague, Dean Wiltshire, operates the community water pump. The school is a school for the whole community. You know, you don't need to be a Episcopalian to come to the school. That same welcome characterizes the medical clinic here, where, even on a hot and sleepy Thursday afternoon, with the temperature approaching 90, patients waited in line. The illnesses or diseases that cause people to come more frequently to the clinic here are typhoid, malaria, TB, and HIV. They come from all over the place to come here because the care they get here they could not get where they're from. With so much outreach and service to others, Manwi is, for me, a place of hope. Returning to the capital of Port-au-Prince curbs that enthusiasm. 200,000 dead from the earthquake, hundreds of buildings reduced to rubble, half a million people still living in tents. In the midst of all of that, the Society of St. Margaret, an order of sisters founded in the Anglican Church in the middle of the 19th century, operates Foyer Notre Dame, a home for senior citizens. We prioritize women, we prioritize people we don't have children and they don't have enough financial resources to take care of, them, of themselves. Foyer Notre Dame, run by six employees, sustained severe damage in the earthquake, and repairs are now underway with the financial support of Trinity Wall Street. Every day is different. Every day is a new challenge. We might find ourselves paying somebody's rent we did not plan to do because the person came and exposed her problem, and then we said, okay, we'll pay the rent for you. It's a call. I can find the word to say it in English. I think we, we try to give the, the best we can. Before visiting Foyer Notre Dame, we stopped by the Holy Trinity Episcopal Cathedral, destroyed with only a couple of the priceless murals of Haitian artists still surviving. But next door, where the fall of Episcopal school buildings left more than 200 dead, and which I had photographed in April 2010 as an empty lot, there are now temporary buildings with 900 students in classrooms even as Haiti's presidential palace remains collapsed nearby. Perhaps the quiet efficiency of the Episcopal Church is easier to understand when you experience the energy of worship. Haiti's Episcopalians know their culture, respect their roots, and routinely pay tribute to the man who brought their church here. Our hero is the first bishop of Haiti. Bishop James Theodore Holly. When James Theodore Holly came to Haiti, everywhere we had a school, a church, or a clinic. We, we continue in uh, this philosophy to preach a holistic, holistic gospel. And right now, the Episcopal Church in Haiti has a new generation, eager to continue that tradition, led by Canon Auger Beauvoir, the dean of the Episcopal Theological Seminary. I grew up in Episcopal Church, but I really realized that I want to be a priest when I, when I was at the end of my uh, secondary school. As preparation to be a parish priest, Santi Lever did field work in Bangor, Maine, an environment about as different from Haiti as anybody could imagine. The experience gave her a taste of unusual weather, but most important, gave her a role model. The first time I see snow, it was in Bangor. And the really thing that I can say that Mother Rita, the woman priest who is the rector of St. John's Bangor, I would like to see her working as a priest. Another seminarian whose resume makes him especially meaningful for this struggling society is Dr. Wilnick Pierre, a physician studying to become a priest. Right now in Haiti, it's very important to work in many things not only give the good news of God, he also uh, work in, in other ways. This trip was my third to Haiti, and I kept reminding myself not to engage in the irrational optimism of a privileged North American, 
making your short-term visit here. But is there a reason to hope? Absolutely. In fact, many reasons. First, the people of Haiti, who in spite of intolerable conditions, get up every morning and dress their children for school, shine shoes, sell flowers, direct traffic. They persevere. Second, all over Haiti, there are people such as Jean Jean-Lour Jean, whom we met in Croix des Bouquets, where he leads the faculty and 415 students at San Simeon School. Je suis l'école, je suis passé dans l'école, ça a tout ici, là, ça s'est bien, il a fait classique, moi. Well, I grew up here, and I did my primary studies here. I went to university in Port-au-Prince and studied anthropology and sociology. I discovered that school is the place where you learn to have an exchange of ideas with others. That's the reason I returned to this community to work in education. And there's Hilda Alcindor, a successful Miami nurse who returned to Haiti to serve as the dean of the Episcopal Nursing School in Laogon. So it's no wonder that even as the people of Haiti struggle against immense challenges, the man who leads the Episcopal Church here remains surprisingly hopeful, in large part because of the assistance of the congregations of the Anglican Communion. Here is how Bishop Duracine, whose immediate family suffered so much in the earthquake, describes the relationship with his global family. The whole family is better, and I am not by myself. The whole church is with me.